Hi, this is Dave Smith from No Kill Colorado. I'm here today with Aubrey Cavanaugh of No Kill Huntsville and Alan Rosenberg of the New Jersey Animal Observer. This is No Kill in Motion. Um, our subject today is about negative advertising in the nation, nation's animal shelters. Do they really help make matters worse? Um, and really what we're talking about here is a lot of times you'll see, you know, uh, death threats, basically, of an animal in order to get people to actually step up. Uh, there's other uh, negative ways of advertising. And I really, um, to start, I really don't like um, when you see, you know, like graphic images and stuff, but the death threats of this animal um, will be killed, you know, on this such and such date if, you, if they're not pulled from the animal shelter is something that we do see used out there. I personally don't like it, I, but I do want to mention that at the same time, I do want shelters to be transparent. So I'm actually trying to figure out the balance there of what goes on. I know you have some thoughts on this, Aubrey. Why don't you start? What do, what do you think of this? Well, we saw this in Huntsville, Alabama for a while. Um, when the shelter had transitioned to a more transparent interaction with the public, they did continue to do um, they give animals essentially an expiration date and they would announce publicly on Facebook, if no rescue comes to get this animal or, or nobody adopts this animal by, you know, Friday at 5 p.m., the animal will be destroyed. And uh, those of us in Ill Kill Huntsville, we were just aghast because we thought that, that it, this negativity, um, first of all, it was perpetuating the image of the shelter as a place where animals went not to find new lives, but to die. Um, it was kind of like a form of emotional blackmail. And we talked to the city administrator about it a number of times and asked, why, why do you continue to do that? And um, the answer that we essentially got was, well, the, the city officials didn't like it too much either, but it seemed to work. Um, and we've had a number of conversations um, about this issue over a period of years. And ultimately, thankfully, the shelter has gotten away from that. Um, they no longer provide death threats. There's no longer a red list. Um, or anything like that. What they do instead is they're very transparent about the needs of animals that they're having a difficult time placing. Um, if they have an animal that is special needs or has a spe special behavioral issue, or maybe even it's something where really it's a hospice issue where they really, they know the animal only has a certain amount of time left to live. They just come right out and say that. They say, look, we've got a dog that he's, he's degrading in the shelter. He's developing you know, fear behaviors in the kennel. We really need to get him out in a foster home. This is what we know about his behavior that's positive. This is the type of foster home we need. Will someone please step up to help us? So I think that, that transitioning from threats of death to let's just be real about what's happening so the public knows what the need is, that works better. And uh, I think part of why it works better is when you put an expiration date on an animal, people are, are they're making an emotional and a rash decision because they feel like if they don't act, oh my gosh, the animal's gonna die. And sometimes those rash decisions, I mean, they don't, they don't serve long-term purposes for a solid placement for the animal. So I think being super transparent is great, but when you essentially say, you know, we're gonna kill this animal, um, the public doesn't like that. The public doesn't like that any more than they like graphic images or any more than they like terrible commercials on TV that show shivering animals in the snow um, and say, give me money. I, I, I think you're right, but I'm, I'm going to put you on, 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 on the spot, Alan, because what if, what if it's, okay, so Huntsville's actually got a pretty good save right now. <clears throat> and so, so, you know, in a shelter like that, um, they really shouldn't be doing that. You know, we go to the positivity. We believe in the positivity of, of these kind of posts to bring people in because it's, it's compassion that actually saves these animals' lives. What, what if it is a shelter that's killing? Um, you know, 
should they I, I i really don't have an answer for this that's why i'm putting you on the spot if the shelter is killing should they say it should they say we're going to kill this animal in a week if you if some of them show up or should they just you know spin the message differently what, what do you think well frankly I, I think this whole conversation of threatening to kill animals is such a kill shelter move certainly i, I agree with you david if a shelter i would prefer a shelter that would, would threaten to kill animals to uh, incentivize rescues to pull them instead of just killing them behind closed doors when no one knows about it. Yes, that, that is preferable, but that's not the only two choices. Because the bottom line is when you threaten to kill animals, you're violating the most fundamental principle of no kill. We talk about no kill, all these programs and all that. At the end of the day, the most important principle of no kill is respect for life. And that means not killing healthy and treatable animals in the context of an animal shelter. So yes, if a shelter decides today that I need, I want to implement the no-kill equation and um, I, have, I need a few weeks to put in some programs, maybe you could argue for a few weeks you could, you could do this to avoid killing some animals. But after that, you can't continue to do this because when you look at the history of no-kill shelters that have sustained no-kill over long periods of time, they don't threaten to kill animals. Yeah, they don't. In fact, <clears throat> these shelters tend to send very few animals to rescues in total. Um, usually it's something like 10% or fewer of the animals go to rescues uh, at these shelters because they have developed the other 10 of the 11 no-kill equation programs so well that they don't need to overly rely on rescues. And when you, uh, when the rescue community believes that the shelter is doing their fair share, the rescue community will be more willing to help in the cases that Aubrey mentioned, those severe behavior cases, those severe medical cases where rescues just do it better than a shelter. So um, in general, I would say is you can, you can do this in a very short term to, as an emergency stopgap measure, but over the long term, if you want to get community support and sustain no kill, you cannot threaten to kill animals because it violates the basic respect for life principle of no kill. I like that view a lot. Actually, I'm going to bring this a little um, out of the, um, you know, the kind of death threat advertising. And I'm going to give an example and just ask you guys for how you think um you know, the best way for shelters and or rescues to reach out are. I recently was behind a GoFundMe for a cat named Bowtie. Um, you may have seen a Bowtie was a community cat um, that a person could not get to, but a really great regular person. It was just a great no-kill story. Regular person stepped up and said, uh, we need to help this cat. Um, and he, he had reached out to us. Uh, the cat had a terrible wound on one of his back legs. Um, and could not use the leg. Um, and uh, we basically uh, were pretty sure it had to be amputated before we even took it to the vet, but you know, we wanted to get it to a vet to find out. So we started to go fund me. We actually did use um, uh, the two graphic images of the cat's leg when we first started the GoFundMe um, because we wanted to let people know this cat really needed help. But we were talking about helping the cat, not, you know, not, oh, this cat's, you know, it wasn't just about that. The entire uh, GoFundMe was about helping the cat. And as soon as we got it to the vet, we took the pictures of it. Um, it was like the next day we took pictures of it with the bandages and that it was in, in better shape and that kind of thing. And we definitely promoted the, uh, the story going through showing that we were going to help them. Um, but we did use them. Um, and of course, it, you know, it helped us actually get some traction on the GoFundMe. So, you know, and I feel a little guilty about doing that because I almost never do it. And I did just recently. And this subject was kind of interesting to me then. So uh, back to you, Aubrey. I mean, what do you see is the best way to advertise on a, on a regular basis? Is there any time to use that kind of shock uh, value? I think what you did was appropriate because it wasn't done for shock value. It was done to present the seriousness of a very real situation. And I think as long as you forewarn people um, that what they're about to see includes graphic images or graphic video, that way you give people an opportunity to either look at it, it, the content or not. I know a lot of people like me, I'm very visually oriented 
And once I see something, it's kind of hard to unsee it. And any of us who spend any time on social media for the sake of animal welfare advocacy, I've had stuff come pop up in my newsfeed and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I wish I had never seen that, right? right. So I think that what we have to ask ourselves is to what end? When you're fundraising and you've got a super serious situation, whether it's the cat that you mentioned, or I've seen um, fundraisers where with images of a dog that has a collar that's so deeply embedded that you can like see muscle tissue. Um, and, and I think that it's okay to do that because you're telling people, this is not just some ordinary veterinary visit. This is something where it's gonna take, you know, we may need uh, veterinary experts that are gonna come in and do specialized care. So I think in that regard, I think again, it's, a, it's an issue of being transparent in a responsible way is what I would say. I think that using graphic just for the sh sake of shock um, to, to cause people to have an, an emotional reaction, I don't think that's appropriate. But if it serves an end to actually help an animal toward keeping that animal alive, I see that as being appropriate. What do you think, Alan? Well, I think we have to be very careful um, because we have that risk of having the public perceive rescue and shelter animals as damaged goods. Mm -hmm. Like the ASPCA commercials we all see, I think, are incredibly damaging mm -hmm. because all they show are rescue animals that, frankly, are injured, sick, really, you know, really only pets almost for like the most caring of, of rescuers out there. And the general public, while they want to rescue animals, don't, also don't want a project as well. So I think we need to be very, very careful because the industry has followed that ASPCA model over and over. Again, here we have a shelter called the Associated Humane Society in New Jersey, and they have played that card for 50 years, and the public believes that the animals are damaged good. So what I would say is it's okay to do it a little bit, but you have to be very careful that you don't overdo it. And when you do do it, you have to really show that when the animal does recover, it's great, it's wonderful, it's not damaged goods, because we want to show the public uh, that shelter animals are wonderful pets. They're not these projects that are only for the most caring and altruistic people. They're for every pet owner. That's so right. I think that's how I would approach yeah, that's a that that's a really good point. And to wrap up that story, Bowtie's doing great. He, we did have to do the amputation. He's out of foster with a rescue. He's still pretty skittish because he never lived with a person before. Um, and but he's getting there, and the rescue is completely dedicated to Bowtie making it back. So, um, so I just thought I'd end with that story so everybody knows. If you go look for Bowtie at GoFundMe, you'll see that. Um, we're out of time. This was a great subject. I think we'll come back around to this sooner or later. Um, thanks. We will. We'll talk to you all later. This has been No Kill in Motion.